Hey everyone, this is Marcus and I'm working on the graph. This is a zero to one deploy of a subgraph to subgraph studio. So if you wanna go ahead and do that with me, follow along, let's get to it. First things first, what you're gonna do is go to thegraph.com and click on products, subgraph studio. And from there, connect your wallet. I use MetaMask. Okay, and we are gonna create a subgraph. Okay, at this point, it's helpful to stop and think for a quick second, what should your subgraph name be? For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna call this a Uniswap token subgraph or something like that because I'm going to be indexing the Uniswap token in this subgraph for the tutorial. So let's call it the uh, Uni uh, SG token tutorial. And let's go ahead and see which indexed blockchain I'd like to choose. I'm gonna choose Ethereum and through Subgraph Studio, which is the pathway to the decentralized network on the graph, you have all of these chains available and all of these chains you're able to publish to the decentralized network if you would eventually like to. We're just gonna be going through a deploy here. We're not gonna to publish today. You can see there's also a good amount of test nets in Studio. And if you keep on scrolling, you'll see hosted service. This is in an entirely different location in our products. And so you can go to the products and click on hosted service if these are any of the chains that you would like to be working on today. Uh, these chains, a lot of these chains are going to be migrating and are in the process of migrating over into the supported Subgraph Studio location. So just wanna provide a little bit of context about that. This video is being recorded in April of 2023. Let's continue on. So Ethereum, create subgraph. And this is a good place to put some things if you would like about your subgraph, the subgraph description, the source code URL, that'll be the GitHub, and then website URL of which the uh, subgraph is populating data into. And that is awesome. So let's continue on quickly so we can get building. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is npm install or yarn install. And to do this, I'm gonna get a little split screen action going here. So you can see this kind of copy paste that I'm gonna be doing. So we're gonna do yarn global add and I'll just copy paste that into my terminal. And as this is installing, it's helpful for you to know to please check the npmjs.com uh, graph CLI location. And you can see if you have the most recent version, this is 48.0 as of this recording, April, 2023. But just stay on this because there are new updates coming all the time. So yeah, best practice with that. Next, we will go ahead and initialize the subgraph. So we'll scroll down here. I will copy and paste. And we're gonna be on Ethereum and the subgraph slug is coming in from the CLI directory. It creates a directory automatically, and we know we want mainnet, so that's great. And then now I know I'm getting the Uniswap token. Let's go ahead and get that. I'm gonna go to Etherscan, and I'll type in Uniswap, Uniswap token, and you can see there's the token contract, okay? So I'll copy that, and I'll put that in. And it's got the ABI, which is awesome. Now, just so you know, sometimes the ABI is not able to be populated because it is not a verified smart contract. Let's go through how you might go ahead and solve that really quickly. Um, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger for you. Bop, 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 bop. All right, this was, uh, we wanna go to CD, I believe it was in the desktop, and then tutorial repos, and this was the Uniswap token subgraph. All right, so now that we're in there, I'm gonna create a file uh, in this location that is gonna be the ABI, if you should need to import this ABI, and it is a unverified smart contract. So I'm gonna put just cancel here, and I'm gonna put in unverified abi.json, and that works just fine, just unverified ABI, cool, cool, cool. And we'll just keep on going in. So now we have this, you'll click on contract if, they, uh, if you need to get this ABI, and you'll scroll down and you'll copy, and now you have the contract ABI. And then from there, you can go to your ABI, 
and save it as that. And now you have the JSON right there. And then this CLI will say, hey, could you provide the path? Guess what? You can. You'll just right click on this. You'll click on copy path and then paste it right in there and you'll be able to continue on. So you'll see also, now that we've solved that, the next line, uh, failed to st uh, fetch start block, that's okay. We can find the start block, no big deal. Let's go back to our uh, contract address. And this location, you wanna go to transactions and you see there's 2 million transactions, click on that. And you can see the start blocks where all, excuse me, the blocks where all these transactions are occurring. So if you scroll down and we can go to the very beginning of where this smart contract was deployed and that was on this start block. So it's best practices to do your very best to gather most accurate data for your subgraph. And I think for this subgraph, I would like to get from the very first start block that has this uh, smart contract deployed to all the way up until today. So that's why I'm choosing this. Your use case might be unique to your uh, subgraph. So the contract name, it is best practices to name the smart contract the same name as the contract name here. So if you go ahead and go to the contract, you can go ahead and check out the contract and see it's named Uni. So we're going to name it Uni. Awesome. So now that we've got through that populating of data, now we want to index contract events as entities. This is really where the magic occurs with subgraph building. It is now scaffolding out our repo. So it is preparing to gather all of the events that are emitted from the smart contract, from the Uniswap token smart contract, and then convert those into entities so you are able to query them using GraphQL. So it's doing this all for you. We're not deploying it just yet. We're just scaffolding out the code. So do we want to add another contract? Nope. And you can see next steps, run graph auth, CD, and then run yarn deploy. You could totally do that right through here, but I like to just copy paste. So if I make this a little bit more legible, authenticate in CLI. You can copy that right there and bring that into your CLI and paste. This has the authentication token right here. So just be cautious to not let anyone see that. I'm gonna blur this out in the video. So I'm gonna press enter and then I'll just press clear. And so it's authenticated, which is awesome. And then now I need to CD into the location. And then from there, it's Graph CodeGen and Graph Build. Graph CodeGen provides type safety to your subgraph, and Graph Build compiles your subgraph. Anytime you make any alterations to your code, it's a good idea to just check those, run those, and then you will see if your subgraph is able to have type safety and is able to compile. From there, really quickly, what I want to do is take a look at the code that we have built thus far. And I just want to look at the schema because this is really what your front end is going to be able to query. It's looking at these entities that uh, are representations of the events that have come from the blockchain. And so we've got the transfer entity and we've got the minter change entity and delegates votes changed. All of these are automatically created when your subgraph spins up and are going to have different data points attached to them when the events are emitted from the smart contract. So we'll take a look at this transfer entity here because I want to pay attention to that when we deploy our subgraph to subgraph studio. Let's continue on. The next step is we are going to deploy the subgraph. So if I copy this and I paste, we are now deploying. We'll use V0.0.1, and we are deploying to Subgraph Studio, which is awesome. So you can see, uploading, build completed, deploying to Subgraph Studio, bam, it was updated, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. It is right now in Subgraph Studio, which is really, really cool. It was that quick. And it's going to be indexing right now, very nice, already 94% done. You are free to, of course, at this time, Use the subgraph. This is in a staging environment that is Subgraph Studio. I'm going to make this full screen now. 
this location of indexing is in the staging environment that is Subgraph Studio, which means this staging environment is being indexed by a centralized service provided by the graph for the purpose of iterating, testing, and getting your DAP up to functional capacity before you publish. Okay, so we're not going to go into publishing today. We'll talk about that in another video. If you're interested in that, go ahead and keep the lookout for that. Links in the description, of course. And here at this staging environment, you can go to the playground and check out what your entities look like. So remember that transfer entity that I looked at a little while ago? Let's look at the transfers right now. Let's look at the first 10 and let's get the from, the to, and the amount. Let's see how that's looking. And boom, we've got live data from the Uniswap token that is on the Ethereum blockchain. So awesome. Congratulations on making it this far. As you're iterating, you could check on the logs, you could add more details, and then you can go back and go to your code and make some alterations to the schema. And then once again, go ahead and deploy again. Right there, you could see graph deploy studio, and it automatically populates. And then let's say you've made these changes and you're saying, hey, let's go to V0.0.5 or 7 or 10 or whatever, as you're continuously getting your subgraph really, really nice. And the goal is to have it be a powerful, incredible subgraph because at that point you have, see, already 0.05, you have created an incredible piece of technology that your DAP is able to use and have live blockchain data coming through. So I'm really stoked about subgraphs. I think they're an incredible representation of the power of the decentralization of the uh, Web3 space. And then also having this be permissionless. Anyone can build this up and then you can build your dApp on top of that. Now, once again, I wanna highlight that this is a hosted staging environment in Subgraph Studio. When you eventually would like to publish, stay tuned for a video on that in the future, this is publishing to a decentralized network of indexers that are around the world. So I wanna make that very clear that right now, feel free to use this. This is Subgraph Studio, but it is the pathway to the decentralized network of speed and security that is the graph indexers. So I'm Marcus. I hope you enjoyed the zero to one quick deploy walkthrough of a subgraph to subgraph studio. If you have any questions or concerns, please go ahead and check the links down in the descriptions. Hopefully that can help you out with your journey in developing subgraphs. So take care. I'll see you guys around.